Hey guys, Wayne Stevenson here and I got a public service announcement for you. You're breaking my heart. There's no reason why you should be damaging your flight controllers before you even put them in the air. I'm going to teach you some beginner soldering techniques that are going to help save you money. First off, don't be afraid of lead. Never use lead free. Second off, don't use heavy gauge solder. It's garbage. At most use a 1 mil. I prefer a 0.5 mil. It's the best. Doesn't take much heat to melt it, and you can feed it in slowly and with precision. Always work with a clean tip. I always use steel scouring pads to clean my tip off. And use a soldering iron with adjustable temperature. And now I'm going to show you some tips that you can practice. So before I even get started, I make sure that my soldering, soldering iron is at the right temperature. I also want to make sure that my solder iron is clean, so I'll tin it and wipe it off. And you'll know you're at the right cleanliness and temperature when your solder starts sticking properly. As I'm soldering, I like to blow the, uh, the smoke from the rosin core out, so I'm not breathing that. I'll show you what I'm doing here when I'm cleaning the tip. I'm just stabbing it in, give it a little twist. This cleans off any oxidization and contamination. Don't keep your eyeballs too close to it because you can have spatter as that rosin um, vaporizes off. It can shoot little blobs of solder at you. And now I'm going to just give you some techniques here that you can practice before you start soldering on your flight controller. I always like to uh, use a liquid solder stick. It just drips around, makes a mess everywhere. But cleans things up nicely. I'm going to start off by showing you some tinning of lead free solder. This one came with uh, some sort of kit I had. You can see it doesn't flow great. Oh, and it has a horrible smell. You start by heating your pad up, and I like to touch the solder iron and transfer it to the pad and then you let it dwell for a second and this stuff doesn't very doesn't wet very good doesn't go edge to edge and we can mess around with trying different temperatures but I'm just gonna throw this back in the garbage and never use that again that was lead free electronic solder it's horrible stuff I'm going to show you with uh, now with a one mil solder. So again, we like to keep our tip tinned. It helps for better heat transfer. So I touch the pad, and then I feed the solder in to the join. I let the solder iron dwell inside the uh, the puddle. And that ensures that there's enough heat contact there. Let it dwell, pull out. Heat the pad, touch the tip, feed it into the puddle, let it dwell, release. And that's it. 
ultimately you're let ultimately you're looking for less than uh two second dwell time one one thousand two one thousand The less dwell time you have, the better it is for your electronics. So I try to keep it around two seconds. Now, if you don't wet to the edges there, you let it cool down for a second and then apply heat and move it around a bit. Between each solder joint, I like to clean my tip out. Just like that. I'm going to switch it up to a half mil. This is my workhorse here. I pretty much do 99% of all my soldering with the lower gauge. It just feeds in nicely, just like that. I'm going to turn the temperature down a bit and use some thicker gauge here to steal that temperature quick and cool it down more. This is typically the speed you want to go at when you're tinning your pads. And these pads are a lot larger than you'll have on most DSCs or flight controllers. Once the temperature is down enough, I'm going to show you what it'll start to look like when your temperature's dropping. Now you see now that the temperature's dropping. As you can see, now that the temperature has dropped, we're dwelling a lot longer than we want to to feed the solder in because it's not melting as quick. That can damage your electronics. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you don't dwell. I'm going to feed the puddle. And it's not wetting edge to edge. Pull away too quick. And you don't have proper adhesion. Again, you can go back and dwell, but now you're adding more heat to the joint, and you don't want that. I'm going to further turn the temperature down more. Now keep in mind, these are solder pads too, so we don't have any traces that are pulling that heat away from it. See now that we're way too cold, so we're having a hard time forming that puddle. There's barely enough heat to uh, Drag it in. 
now you can start seeing a function or a phenomena where you start seeing little spikes coming off when you pull away. They're only going to get worse. See, now you can see what happens when your temperature it's not high enough. See the struggle there? If you ever see that happening, you'll know what's happening. Your temperature is not high enough. Now we can always go back once we increase the temperature and fix those puddles. I'm going to turn up a little bit higher this time. And you can see the difference. If you hear that crackling, you can hear that rosin uh, kind of vaporizing off real quick. Uh, any higher temperature than this, and we risk um, vaporizing the rosin before we've made our connection, which defeats the purpose of having rosin inside the core. Once you vaporize the rosin, it's not doing its job. Oh. 